okay? And uh, yeah, so wonderful to know all of you. In fact, most of you are serving on uh, in one ministry or other. Uh, frankly speaking, I think almost everybody I know is serving in a ministry. And so thank, thank God for you. But we believe that more is going to come on board. Yeah, more new people are going to join because we believe this church has got more potential to reach out uh, to more people in our community. Amen? All right. I don't like people sitting too far away. Can all your handsome people up there behind Yenny and Kenny, can you move to the front? The front seats are the best here. It's so empty. Can, can all those people sitting at the back, can you please move to the front? Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah, the back, come move to the front. Move, move, move. Yeah, stewards, move everybody to the front. You want to see people uh -huh, right in front. Yeah, front seats are the best. Not move to the back, move to the front. You're just moving from here to the other side. No difference. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Do you know why? Less distraction, I'm telling you. I always like the front seats because at the back, you tend to get distracted with people around uh, if they're talking to each other or whatever. Huh? So, it's, it's so good to be in the house of God. Amen? Amen. Aren't you glad for you know, this church? It's more than our church that we come on Sunday. We do life together in a connect group. We serve together uh, in ministry teams. And we meet up together uh, as leaders. Whatever it is, we are always uh, together, doing stuff together. And it's so good to know that, you know, you may feel like you are alone and you are, you know, you are weak, but together we are strong. Hallelujah. Ha. Yes. And uh, you may feel your Faith is weak, but together your faith is boosted up when you come together to pray. And um, we, we begin to see things happen when God's people come together. The river, the, the life of God is here. God's presence is here. Do you know the river of God is flowing today? Did you jump in? <laughs> Did you jump in and get wet and all? Or you are saying, oh, I don't want, I'll just be cool standing there and just, uh, eh, you know, and I uh, don't want uh, the mess uh, I don't know what's going to happen, and just, just, just stay away. But, you know, go all out. God, you know, it's, we think that we are seeking God. Really, God is seeking us. God is looking out for true worshippers who worship Him in spirit, inside, and in truth. And, uh, you know, when your heart is all out every Sunday, just coming up, I, I, I'm, I'm going to speak about the words of the kingdom. And I begin, even as I prepare the word, it's like, oh, I'm having goosebumps while preparing it. Like, God, yeah, how, how, how ignorant we are so many times. You know, what you want to do on a Sunday? You know, all of us coming together every Sunday is such a privilege, it's such an honor to be together as God's people, to be uh, uh, worshipping God together. And the presence of God here in this place is just so awesome. The house of God is so awesome. If, you, if our understanding, if we understand this, is we are not just doing, doing our Christian duty coming to church. It's more than that. Because when we come, we, re, we are... God is here. Amen? The presence of God is here. The river of God is here. And, and, uh, and you're going to receive the words of the kingdom that's going to move you forward. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise God! Praise God! That's why I'm, I'm just so... You know, I've served God all my life since I was young. And until now, for me, church is life. I tell you, I won't want to be anywhere else but in church <laughs> on a Sunday night. No. Nothing, nothing. When people say, oh, you mean every Sunday? Can't you just keep one Sunday and not go to church? No! It's not because we have to, because we want to. This is family. This is life. <laughs> okay, this is God. And it's a God thing. And uh, nothing can pull us away from church. Huh? People who don't, don't understand the kingdom of God doesn't understand what we're doing here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. More, more people should receive what we are receiving today because it's so awesome what we are receiving from God today. Amen. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to jump into the river of God? Yes, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your wonderful, wonderful, awesome presence here among us in this place. Thank you for your kingdom. Your kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy. And it's right inside of us. We thank you for the kingdom that's released through our worship, released even here in this place. We thank you, Jesus. You are our King and our Lord. We come under your rulership. We submit ourselves to you and to your words, which are the words 
words of the kingdom and we receive today. Open ears, open eyes, open hearts, open us all to receive from you. We are ready, we are willing, we are prepared, God, to do something, to move into our situation, move into our lives in a greater measure. Hallelujah. Let the kingdom not just uh, be visible, but in a demonstration of power. Let it be visible to the demonstration of your power through our lives, we ask. We commit to you everything that's going to be said and done. Jesus, in your precious name, we pray and ask. Amen. Amen. Aren't you blessed? Okay, you're hearing me back and forth, back and forth, but uh, so far, Pastor Joe and myself, we've been preaching a message that's really linked, huh? So it's superb because uh, everything you'll be talking about is just along the same line of, uh, about the kingdom. Words of the kingdom today I'm talking about. Words of the kingdom. The kingdom of God contains all, everything that we need and we desire. When Jesus came, he came preaching the kingdom. He came demonstrating the kingdom with power. And this kingdom he talks about, when he came, he brought it with him. Let's look at one scripture. Luke, let me reinforce that verse again. Luke 17, verse 20 to 21. What does it say? And now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, See here or see there. For indeed, the kingdom of God is within you. That's where the kingdom is. Some of you might say, but the kingdom of God is within. How get that big kingdom gets inside of us? Ask God. I don't know how. <laughs> but it does. The kingdom of heaven is within inside of every one of us. <laughs> it's an invisible kingdom at this point of time. It's an invisible kingdom. <laughs> but in our near future, hopefully very near future, the, during the millennium, the physical kingdom will be set up on earth. You know that, isn't it? If you read your Bible, you know that one day, Jesus is going to come literally reign on earth. That is the, the hope that we have. That so at this point of time, it's an invisible kingdom, but it has visible powers. Hallelujah. We can see the kingdom because that's visible powers and it is in every single one of us. Every single one of us, including the children, including the young people that's born again. Hallelujah. And we're going to study about the kingdom now, uh, continue with the kingdom. Uh, let, let's first understand about Jesus when he came down to earth. Ned, remember, he's son of God. He's eternal son of God. And, uh, but when he came, he became a man. Yes? Son of God. He became a man. He put away his divinity and he operated as a man that's empowered by the Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible many times call him the what? The last Adam. He was like Adam before Adam fell and lost his dominion, lost his authority, lost his assignment, lost his uh, power and position and provision, whatever it is. But Jesus came as the last Adam to restore back, to take back everything that Adam lost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I told you that when God created man, what did he do? I preached two weeks ago. He blessed man. And I told you the word bless is such a powerful word. It's really God is transferring his power over to Adam. So that Adam would take the garden that he was placed in and extend the garden over the earth. That's why he commanded Adam with this assignment. Say what? What? Be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth. You're supposed to replenish, resupply, restock the earth. It's not meant to be just a garden. It's meant to extend throughout the world. The garden is the kingdom of heaven. The garden is the kingdom of heaven. Everything that Adam needs for himself and his, for his assignment to extend the garden is really in the garden. The garden. Everything is in the garden. Now today the garden is the kingdom. Everything that we need is in the kingdom. Wealth, your health, what's that? Peace, your joy, your provision, your strength. Everything absolutely, blessings upon blessings are all where? In the kingdom. And where is the kingdom? Within. How many times you look and we, oh, a lot of Christians, we imagine the kingdom is out there. When God say the kingdom is inside here. 
Wow. When you understand that, you understand you're not, you no, know, like a, uh, we talked about Deuteronomy, where they say, where are we going to, where are we going to get that uh, word uh, from? What? Go up to, huh? Go to another country or go to the deeper sea. Where are we going to get the words of the kingdom? It's right here, yeah. within your mouth. Yeah. And it's in your heart. Yeah. That's where it is. Right here. We need to understand that. And uh, where the kingdom is. So that we understand wherever we go, the kingdom goes with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes? And when your foot step foot in the in the office, wherever you are placed, it doesn't matter whether the dev, the devil owns that. You bring everything under the jurisdiction of God, because you carry the kingdom with you everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just so excited about this because many times we've been taught since uh, you know coming to church about the gospel of salvation, and we thought that's it. No. That's the gospel of salvation. There are people who get saved, but God wants us to preach the gospel of the kingdom. He said, preach the gospel of the kingdom, the lordship of Christ on, uh, over his kingdom. Not just about salvation, because if all you know is salvation, many Christians have salvation, they are safe, uh, but then if they don't have a kingdom minded, they don't have the mind that's renewed, you know what happens? You won't be able to inherit all that kingdom people are supposed to inherit. So we see a lot of Christians, they are safe, but their lives are still messed up. They're safe, but they're broke constantly. They're safe, but their marriages are in a mess, and they're divorced. They're safe, huh? but they're constantly sick. So God's not just interested in you understanding about salvation, that's why we're teaching this teaching of the kingdom because that's the gospel of the kingdom that we need to understand and we need to know how to operate in that kingdom. And uh, I'm going to teach about this because if we don't, then we're going to be missing something so important in our lives. So important. And that is the kingdom, the words of the kingdom. Uh, you know, once we understand that, let me tell you, Satan is already defeated. We all know that. But the problem is our minds not renewed, like I said, my people, Hosea said, my people have been destroyed, not by Satan, not by money, not by position, but by the lack of knowledge, ignorance of how, as kingdom people, we are to operate. So today we're going to study the word, we're going to study how we're going to operate and, uh, in this kingdom, and uh, we're going to Rise up as God's kingdom people here on earth. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let's see Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13 here. It says, Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of His Son, of His love. So you see here, we are what? Called saints in the light. I think C3 has a song, huh? Saints in the Light, da, da, da. I don't know. We haven't sung that song yet, but that's a nice song. The kingdom of God, it's what? Light. But the kingdom of darkness is darkness, of course. The kingdom of darkness, or the, okay, the dark system is the Babylonian system, okay? This is Satan's world. It's a darkness. It is operated by darkness. But the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is light here. The light system is God's system. Now, there are two worlds out here. You can see that. And there are two systems as well out here. Two systems operating. And there are two sets of words, different ways of thinking, different ways of speaking, different ways of acting and reacting. There are two kingdoms here. I'm going to see how huh, we... Kingdom of light is supposed to operate different from the kingdom of darkness. Now, tell me, which kingdom is superior? Of course, light. Light is superior. Darkness has no power. You, you know that, isn't it? Darkness is, the moment light comes, light is energy. We all know from science. It's energy. Darkness has got no power. And so the kingdom of light is here in superior. The king of darkness is trying to keep us out but we are invading into the kingdom of darkness. Let me tell you, uh, without the kingdom of God, man is going to self-destruct. That's why it's so important as sons of God that we manifest the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light if we fail. Let me tell you, man will destruct. 
will self-destruct without God's kingdom uh, here. So how are we going to change the world? Okay, we see that so much is happening in the world. Now we have to operate in a higher principle of love, joy, peace, and... Uh, okay, let's turn to uh, the next verse. Okay, all this that is the principle of God, of God's kingdom. Okay, Galatians 5 verse 22 and 23 tells us what? The higher principles of God are what? The fruit of the Spirit, which is a supernatural fruit of love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such, there is no law. Okay, these are the principles, the higher principles that we operate huh, in. But you can see that there is a natural world out there that also operates in inferior principle. And what's that principle? Let's turn to the next verse there. Galatians 5 verse 19 to 21. Now, the works of the flesh are the evidence which is what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, her heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and the likes of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You see, there are two different principles that's in operation in two systems entirely different now we operate in a higher level okay but 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 the world thinks that when they're operating on a lower level they're advancing they're not absolutely not huh you know right every every day you go into your office how do you operate you can't escape you think you escape from one place you change another job they still got politics there everywhere you go huh everybody's gonna try and step on each other to climb up the ladder huh that's how they operate, and they think they're moving forward. But the Bible says very clearly, Galatians 6, another verse 7 and 8 says what? Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Don't envy people who are up there who got their way by conniving ways and by putting others down, by slandering others and, you know, to their uh, greed. God said, yep, next verse, Galatians 6, 7 and 8. Do you have that? Do not be deceived, God's not mocked for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to his flesh or his body, soulish desires will of the flesh reap what? Corruption. But he who sows to the spirit of the spirit, what do you reap? Everlasting life. So, the devil's way is always going to lead to what? Corruption. Death, destruction. It's not going to end anywhere but downhill. All right? Believe me. That's what the Bible says. If we can get people to understand this, that they, you, we need to operate. With the, be careful what you sow because you can be a Christian and be, still be sowing in the flesh. And you know where it's going to end? Death and destruction because the, the, the devil is the spirit of death. There's no life in it. Huh? But when we sow in the spirit, that's why God want us to begin to sow in the Spirit. When you sow in the Spirit, what's going to lead to? Eternal life, everlasting life. So, who is waiting? The world is waiting for us to sow on a higher level, on a different level from them. We need to believe, and we need to start sowing on that different level. The Bible says, Proverbs 14, verse 12, there's a way that seems right to man, but the end is what? The way of death. How do you have some people come to you? No, you have to, you have to do this. If you don't do this, you, it won't work. You won't get your promotion. You won't, you know, you'll be successful. As I shared about the uh, uh, Dato uh, George thing, huh? and how, you know, he goes by the principle. No corruption, no bribes, absolutely nothing. His staff members all know. And yet today, he's where he is today. Okay, only, you know, the, uh, he's, uh, what, chairman of the, uh, this Pizza Hut franchise chain in Singapore, Malaysia, and Brunei, okay? This man is a proof, a living proof that you can operate by a higher principle and you still succeed, okay? The world will tell you no way, okay? You Christians are going to lose out if you don't going to follow the system of the world. But we believe God's word, God, the blessing of God is on your life. Hallelujah. You have faith in the blessing that's on your life and you choose to operate by the principles of God. See the difference. God says he gives you riches but adds no sorrow to it. Where the, 
the people of the world may have the riches but with lots of sorrow attached to it. Haha, <laughs> you sure won't want that. Yeah. Can gain the whole world, the Bible says, and lose your own soul. Huh? Okay. So that's why we need to understand this, uh, uh, this system, the light system, the kingdom of light. Okay, but sad to say we were all trained in the dark system. We grew up being trained in a dark system. And we have to be retrained. Yeah. Retrained to operate in the kingdom. That's different from God's, uh, from the enemy system, okay? Let me give you one, a few scriptures to help you see how you're going to operate. Huh? Look, 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Here it says, We are born again. We have the kingdom of God in us. How do we operate in that kingdom? Look here. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God which lives and abides forever. Hallelujah. Now, what's the seed? Here. This seed is incorruptible. It is, what does it say? The word of God. Yes? You understand that? Okay, you see that? It's the word of God that is incorruptible. How were you born again? With the seed, huh? That's incorruptible. Now, look to another verse, John chapter 1, verse 1. It says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So what's the Word? The Word is God. Okay, look here now. The seed is the Word. And here say the Word is God. So the incorruptible seed is God. Hallelujah. We are born of the incorruptible seed, which is God. That's why we are born of God. We've got the, God's DNA inside of us. You know, we may so, so many times say, oh, I tell you, uh, he's really a son of so-and-so and all that. You know, Ethan, uh, not Ethan, Joshi, uh, I just had uh, recently... Uh, Debbie just texted us and said, you know what is Joshi doing? Joshi is doing exactly what you're doing, uh, Papa. You know, he's got locks, right? Curly locks. And he was doing like that whilst he was watching TV. Uh. I don't know where he get that. That's Pastor's trend. Uh. Pastor, whenever he sits down and he's thinking or he's watching TV, he'll be doing his hair like that. Just twisting his... That's why he's got messy hair, I tell you all the time. <laughs> and Joshi was doing exactly the same thing. Nobody taught him, and nobody say, you know, but he's just doing, you know, everybody say so like Pastor Joe in so many ways and things like that. You know, you have got DNA, you have some... You, you're born of your parents, you have some DNA inside. Thank God my kids have... My grandchildren have got little DNA from me. You know what's that? <laughs> Chinese blood in there. It's Chinese DNA can't escape. And um, the mark that they have uh, that cannot escape is their dimple. Nobody else got dimple in Diff Clarence family, jo Pastor Joe's family. They got my dimples, okay? <laughs> ha ha. Uh, DNA. You're born of God. You've got God's DNA. <laughs> we don't try to be godly. We are godly because we have God's DNA inside of us. Hallelujah. You understand that? That's why I talk about the word of the kingdom. You are coming every Sunday. No, people don't understand. Why are you wasting time in church for? So many things you can do on Sunday. You can play golf on Sunday. You can sleep in on Sunday. You can go shopping on Sunday. Have a picnic on Sunday. Whatever. Why do you have to come to church? They don't understand that what we're coming. We're coming for the word of the kingdom. God. To get more of God. <laughs> more of God. More of God, when we come into an atmosphere of faith, you have faith. You need to get in an atmosphere of faith with God's people, with God's presence, is, and you and receive more of God inside our life. That's why you, you can't talk to the non-Christian. They won't understand you. Try and see. Go back and tell your non-Christian parents or tell your non-Christian friends, I tithe. Do you know that? Tithe? What's tithe? It means I give 10% of your, my income. You give 10% of the income? Like just now Mukian saying, you're mad or what? Huh? <laughs> the church has hypnotized you, that's why. That's why I don't go to church. When we talk about church, everybody say, well, better not go. They hypnotize you to give tithe. No, because you know the words of the kingdom. You know the laws of the kingdom. You know how, it, how God, the, the principles that God works through by prospering you. Tithe means God, you have ownership over me. 
Satan can't touch me. He knows that I'm owned by God. I'm a covenant child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you need to know how to operate in that superior uh, level there because the word is the incorruptible seed. And every Sunday, that's what you're coming. You're coming to receive the word of the kingdom, the words of the kingdom that's designed to what? Lift you up. Fix anything that is out of alignment and bring it back to the alignment to God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. That's what you are doing. Don't lose that. Don't lose that. So many people lose that and think that, oh, I'm just doing, oh, oh, do I need to go to church this week? I'm so tired, I'm sick, and all sorts of excuses. You need to come yeah. week after week without yeah. fail to get the word of the kingdom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen? Okay, we got to know how we're going to design to operate, how we are designed to function on earth, right? Uh, just as there are natural laws that govern this world. Yeah? Laws of gravity, whatever laws of lift or whatever. There are also spiritual laws that governs this kingdom. You know, a law means what, right? A law is something that operates and works every time, everywhere, or with every person. Doesn't matter what race you are, what country you go to, wherever. That law applies. Whether you like it or not, it applies all the time, everywhere, every place. We need to be trained, just as we've been uh, train in darkness, uh, I mean, the natural laws, we need to now be trained in the spiritual laws of God's kingdom so that we can function in His kingdom. Do you know how we function in His kingdom? We function primarily by words. Okay, this is so important. And I think I'm going to labor on this again and again because a lot of people still don't believe this and they don't do it, basically. All right? And maybe some of you, maybe you may have done it, but you were discouraged because it did. <laughs> when you get into a fiery situation, you fall back into the way you speak again. Okay? We've got to get the word of the kingdom, like I said. Words. We function primarily by words. Why? Because we're made in the image of God, our Heavenly Father, and our God functioned by words. Jesus functioned by words. I've showed previously, okay, how he spoke to the fig tree. He didn't even have to lay hands on the fig tree. He just spoke the word. He spoke to the storm. He spoke to sicknesses. He spoke. Huh? I'm going to elaborate and teach more about that, but let's look at Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. Here says, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in times past to the fathers by the prophet, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. Jesus is heir of all things, through whom also he made the world. Okay, continue. Is that it? I think it's that some more. Through whom also he made the world, continue, who being the brightness of his glory, the express, Jesus is the express, exact image of God in person. And this is what I wanted you to see. And upholding all things, how? He upholds all things, how? By the power of his word or by the word of his power words are what made this planet amen yeah. words is what's holding this planet you say to the power of his words is holding this planet all the atoms and whatever you call pro i don't know what atoms what that's coming coming together to make this material world it's held by the words of god so words are what made the planet Words are what holding the planet. We live in a word-created, word-ruled planet. Started with words, and it's kept by words. And do you know that Satan also created another world? The world of darkness? And guess what? He uses what? Words. He also uses words. He made people say his words to keep his kingdom in place with his words. It's words that's the very foundation of everything that you see. 
Look at that. Constitution have words, right? Yeah. Contracts have words. What else? Tell me. Movies have words. Yeah. Songs have words. Email words. Yeah. What else have words? What's add? <laughs> on and on. Huh? Words, 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 words. It's we're governed by words, whether we like it or not. This whole world is governed by words. So you cannot change the fact that we are governed by words. However, we can choose, we can choose the words to live by. That's, that's why the Bible says, choose now, Deuteronomy. Choose now, life or death, what? Blessing or cursing, you choose. And how do you choose? With your words. I spoke two weeks ago about the blessing. If you didn't get the message, please go back there and... Listened, that was a start, a gist of uh, introduction, how powerful words are, and uh, you have to choose. There's no such thing as, oh, this is God's word, this is the devil's word, this is my words. No. There are only two sources. It's either God's word or the other source. All right? You think it is your words, but it's really another source, which... You know, we have been created to be overlord. We are never created to be sovereign. God alone is sovereign. We are created to be overlord. So you either overlord and controlled by God, or you controlled by Satan. It's just that many people who are controlled by Satan, they, they don't know that they're controlled by Satan. Okay, that's how it is. There are two, two worlds out there, two kingdoms out there, and two lords over, out there. Which one? And uh, that's why the enemy is after your words. He's after your speech because he understands how his kingdom operates, how the kingdom of God operates. If you don't make the choice, let me tell you this what's going to happen. The devil will make the choice for you. The devil will make you think his thoughts, say his words, and act and respond by his system. And you think it's yours, it's really the devil's. Now, It was words that separate two groups of people that went, that were supposed to go into the promised land, Canaan land. Let me give you the example. Two groups of people, two distinctly different reports. Okay? Twelve spies went in to scout out the land, the promised land, you remember? Ten spies out of twelve, ten of them spoke words of evil report and did not go in. Two, which is who? Joshua and Caleb spoke words of good report and went in. Now, what made the difference? It's the different words they use. Okay, we're going to look at it. Look at it. I know you. Let's, let's look at it. Let, let's not miss it. No, uh, uh, Numbers chapter 13, verse 31, 33. Huh. Look at this ten spies. The man who had gone up with him said, We are not able to go up against these people, for they are stronger than we. Look at the words they used. And he gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying, The land through which we have gone as spies is a land that devours the eats its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw it are men of great stature. They're very big. And what happened? They saw the giants, the descendants of Anna came from giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight and so we were in their sight see how it see the words see what they said they said we are not able to go up no we can't go against people who are the stronger and us and they devour they eat us up man <laughs> huh they're like giants you know and we are like grasshopper and so they became like grasshopper the bible says very clear through their words, okay? And look what the other, uh, I'll continue, okay? 14 verse 1 and 3. And again, 14 verse 1 and 3. And the whole congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. Oh, they have a pity party that night. Cried, cried, cried lots. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt, or, if only we had died in this wilderness. 
see what they, their words were. Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword and, by our, and our wives and our children should become victims? Look at them. The words that they use. Victims we are. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Look at the words. I'd rather we die in Egypt. I'd rather we die in the wilderness. And they did all die because of their words. Their words. And look, okay, let's look at Joshua and Caleb. What did they say? Numbers. Numbers chapter 13, verse 30 says, Then Caleb quiet the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. See that? Caleb was quoting God, because God said, I'm giving you the land. God promised to them, I'm giving you the land. And he was standing by the land and said, Come on, God's promise, let's go in and possess it. All right, let's continue. Let's see what else. Okay, Numbers 14, verse 7 to 9. And they spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, The land we pass through to spy out is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, and He will bring us into this land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey only. Do not rebel against the Lord. That's what you are doing when you refuse to say and believe God's word. You are rebelling against God. Now fear the people of the land, for they are our bread. One group say they're going to eat us up, devour us. And well, look what he said. They are our bread. We are going to eat them up. <laughs> See the words. Look at that. For they are but our bread. The protection has departed from them. The Lord is with us. Do not fear them. See, exact opposite. Exact opposite. Did they saw the giants? Of course they saw the giants. Did they see the walled cities? Yes, they saw the walled cities. But they refused. They, had, they refused to believe, be moved by what they saw or what the others are saying. They stood their ground on what God's word said. Okay, so you see Joshua and Abe Caleb, both of them, they didn't go in the promised land, of course. They, and for 40 years, they all wandered in the wilderness. Huh? They wandered in the wilderness. And can you imagine Joshua and Caleb, how they must have felt? Huh? Going, walking through the wilderness. I believe they were still confessing the word. We are well able to do it. We are well able to do it. We are well able to do it. They would have confessed it again and again. Why? Why do we, do we believe that he... They, they, they did not give in to the evil report. They continued to speak the word of God. Huh? Because you see, yeah? okay, where is that? The next verse, uh, Joshua chapter 14, verse 10 to 12. We're well able to do it. They stay on the confession. They did not give in to uh, the rest of them. They stayed and they continued to speak. What happened? It says here, here, the whole generation died. So sad, huh? Three million of the generation that said and believed the evil report died. None of them entered in, except who? Joshua and Caleb. See, the amazing thing about this is three million people died in the wilderness, couldn't stop this two person from going into their promised land. Hallelujah! I don't care how, who says what, if you believe, you will go into your promised land. Hallelujah. They waited 40 years, but they never gave up. They kept saying, I'm well able to, I'm well able. They kept confessing, they kept confessing. And when time for Joshua to go in, what did they say to Joshua? The Lord kept me alive, as he said, these 45 years. Look at that, 45 years. Ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, here I am this day, 85 years old. And as yet, I'm as strong this day as on that day. He wasn't lying, okay? He was not like old and haggard and saying, I'm still strong as ever. No, no, no. Old Testament, you tell lies, you die, okay? That's how serious it is. No, he wasn't telling lies, neither was he joking. It was true because he believed it. And this 80-year-old man, who 85 years old actually, went in as though he was 45. 
That's what, because that's what he says. That's his confession. As yet, I'm as strong this day as the day that Moses sent me, just as my strength was then. So now is my strength for war, for both for going out and for coming in. Look at that man of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Never too old to go into your promised land. Let me tell you, never too young, never too old. Whatever you be, whatever you speak. So don't say, I'm old already, la. I'm not strong anymore, la. I'm getting forgetful, la. You know how many of us all like to say all those words, la? Every, every part of my body is falling out, la. <laughs> no, this man never said that for 85 years, for 45 years, he kept saying, I'm well able to, I'm well able to. That's why his, his strength continued to stay strong. And I tell you, if you want to stay strong and stay young forever until you're 100, okay? And some people say, think that, oh, 75 years is good enough for me like, to live. Actually, 75 years was not, not actually God's plan for men. God's plan was for men to live longer than 75 years. But you are ah, enough already. La. Life is so troublesome. Ah, you die early. La. <laughs> and you die early. And young people are dying like flies. Like that. Dying, 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 dying. I know of a young man that said, ah, yeah, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm ready to die. La. In fact, she was, he was planning his death and he died. Your words. No joking, huh? Some people say, joke, joke, only la. I'm only joking la. Hey, you joke, joke, huh? But then your spirit is still spirit. You still eat the words, all right? Yeah. Go ahead and joke, but you still eat the words that you joke. <laughs> okay? <laughs> so, words are so powerful. Words are so powerful. Yeah. Now, when we are in church, it's so easy for us to say the words of the kingdom. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! <laughs> God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. We quote all this, we sing the songs, God, you are my strength of my life, you are more than enough, everything we can say. But then we go out there, in the situation when the fire is turned up seven times hotter. Ha! Huh? What happened? Out we come with all our words, huh? Curse everybody we know, curse our wife, curse our husband, curse the, the, curse the children, curse everybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're angry. Huh? We say anything and everything. Okay? That's why we need to prepare ourselves every day to discipline ourselves. What are we going to allow ourselves to speak? Are we going to speak what God say? Are we going to keep speaking it even though we don't see the manifestation of it yet? Are we going to believe what God say and keep speaking the word or are we going to choose to speak what our own words? Choose now. Matthew 12, verse 34 and 35. Why do you speak the words that you speak? Very simple. The Bible says, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So you speak it, words that are not good, don't say, I, I, I slip on my tongue. Only, uh. I, uh, I don't mean it. Uh. You mean it. It's all inside your heart. That's why it came out. So what are you going to do? Uh -huh. I tell you, we're going to study about the words, uh, how powerful words are. Okay, Matthew 12, verse 34, 35 says what? Jesus said, brute of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, where? The mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasures of his heart brings forth evil things. Continue. Any more? No? Okay, oh, it's missing. Huh? Okay, let me go on. From, But I say to you, Jesus said these words, that every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in a day of judgment. That's serious, huh? He didn't even, even say your actions. Your acts. He says your words are going to be judged. See how God treats the word seriously? We don't treat it serious, huh? But he treats every word we say serious. And then continue. By your words, you will be justified. By your words, you will be condemned. Look at that. You choose. You will be justified yourself or you're going to be condemned, condemning yourself. So what are you saying about yourself? Every day, every time, okay? Not just when you're conscious, but subconsciously. Let me tell you, everything that subconsciously is going to come out. 
okay? And uh, when you're under pressure, out of the abundance of the heart, the Bible says, your mouth will speak. And if you speak wrong words, don't feel condemned. That shows that the abundance of your heart is in there. You've got to get rid of a lot of anger or resentment that's inside of you or a lot of... Uh, hurts inside of you that you have been keeping and you thought that you've done away with it but that it is still there because it will come out of your mouth whatever is inside store inside there you see that so important for us to guard our hearts as the bible says guard your heart guard your heart because it's out of your heart comes the issues of life huh. let me say this to you huh? you have no you have what you have because of what you have been saying. Do you hear? Did you get that? You have what you have because of what you've been saying. You always have to go back to the law of confession. The kingdom operates by words. Hallelujah. I hope today your understanding is open that you believe the word of God, that you no more operate by his <laughs> principles anymore. So, where are the good things that's going to come out from your life? Where? Where is it? The Bible say, your heart. Out of the treasures of your heart, that's where. Huh? Out of your, the tre good treasures of your heart, your mouth, your, uh, you will bring forth good things. So it's your heart that brings forth the treasure, brings forth everything. Okay? So where your life is going to go from here, it all is what is in your heart. So how do you think the, the, the treasures get inside the heart? How? By your words, yeah. what you say, what you keep saying, even not necessarily just what you say, what you keep thinking and saying inside your subconscious as well. Such a stupid, he's so stupid, they're so stupid, they're so stupid, and they're so stupid, they're such an idiot, the situation is so bad, you know, they're just useless, they're no, no good, and you just keep inside, keep saying those words. Huh? By your words, you either justify or by your words, you will be condemned. That's why God wants us, Jesus wants us to see how powerful words are. So you won't take it lightly. Huh? The angry just say, blah, 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 yeah. You lot made me say all this. Huh? Excuse me. Who made you say all this? It all came out from yourself, all right? Yeah. Nobody can put pressure on you to say all those words. You said it because out of the abundance, your heart speaks. Huh? So you can't make any excuses, all right? Both worlds operate by words. Now, we got to put more faith in the kingdom of God's words yeah. than in the words of darkness. Yeah. How many of us, we spend so much time listening to news? How much time we play the breaking news again, the breaking news, CNN. Breaking news is the same news. Breaking news. Uh, we watch so much of that. Okay, I'm not saying don't watch. In fact, nowadays, I, I, I do watch. I don't even read newspaper now, so I watch CNN or whatever. Okay? But whenever you watch, you don't repeat. You know, all of us is just we repeating the words of the devil. We just keep repeating. Oh, ISIS is so strong. They're taking the world. In fact, they're going to come and kill the, uh, the, the, the Chinese first. After that, they kill all the Indians. <laughs> then they go kill all the Muslims. And then everybody is passing that words. Let's get out of here. Let all pack our bags and leave Malaysia. We have no place here. We gave up. You see, everybody voicing the words of ISIS. Is ISIS that powerful? Words of darkness. Operate the kingdom of darkness and brings fear into it. Christians also continue to say the same words. Huh? What's happening? We just keep on reporting everything that CNN report. We also report. We are helping them. In fact, Pass the words around. Huh? Did you hear? You didn't hear? You didn't watch? Huh? You didn't read? Hmm. You're not in touch with the world, okay? But are you in touch with the kingdom of God? You're so in touch with the world, you're not in touch with the kingdom of God. And what's the word of God says? What? We need to put more faith in the word of God. Doubt what you hear. Are you sure or not what you hear on CNN? Are you sure or not what that person say? Are you sure or not? But then the word of God, every time you say, are you sure or not? Tithing is really God's, the, the, the word of God. Are you sure or not? We keep putting doubt on the word of God, but we never put doubt on what the devil says. Change it around. Doubt the words of the devil. Huh? Put more faith in what God says. 
Hallelujah. So whatever it is, the enemy is trying to use our words to express through us. We can be a mouth of the enemy. Christians who go around thinking that, wow, they are servants of righteousness and condemning churches, condemn pastors, condemn this, condemn that. Huh? They're using their words. They're helping the devil to tear down the church. They're helping the devil to tear down all the pastors. Tear down the ministers, tear down the leaders, tear down everything that God... Are we building or are we tearing? Are we helping the enemy to build his kingdom or are we building God's kingdom on earth? Through words. Through words. You know how the devil expressed through us? We are trained very well in the dark system. Huh? Dark system. We express like that. How many times our words are like, I'm dying la, to go. <laughs> huh? I'm sick and tired of you. La. Huh? Oh, yeah, we all love to say that. You know? What else do we say? I'm catching a cold. La. I'm catching flu, flu. Why? Who on earth in the right mind want to catch a flu huh? or catch a cold? But we keep saying, oh, the, the haze is back. Looks like I'm, I'm going to get sore throat. Huh? What else we say? What else? I don't know, Chinese got a lot of words. Uh, sila, sila, ma, 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 I don't know what else we say. Huh? And I didn't even know. No, a lot of us, we use ayo, ayo, isn't it? Huh? Ayo, ayo, and then Pastor, remember Pastor Jacob came and said, do you know ayo, ayo is an Indian word for curse me, curse me? Oh my goodness, well, after I heard that, no more ayo. Every, uh, accidentally, the ayo come out, my, my daughter would say, ah, say some more lah, ayo. <laughs> say lah. <laughs> She's like, uh, we're keeping each other on check what I say. My, my, my bad habit is saying ayo, ayo. Her says, I won't tell you, huh? <laughs> so, why are you saying? You know, we're trained in a dark system to say all that, and we think those are words that he trained to speak his words, and we don't know. Never change, lah. I'm telling you, he's never changed. He'll die also, never change one, I'm telling you. So useless. Huh? No, lah. Nobody will step up to serve God in this church, lah. What are you saying over your ministry? Tell me. It's so, so powerful, huh? Are you saying, God, better musicians are coming, better singers are coming, more people are coming to this church, no? Oh, why, uh, why, uh, no, nah, the church, uh, why people, uh, why so few people, uh, why, uh, why, what are you doing about it? Huh? Only very clever to complain, uh. oh, why, 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 uh, why this is not done, uh, why that's not done, uh, huh? What are you doing about it? Speak. Start by speaking and blessing the church, blessing one another. The devil wants us to get so irritated with each other and start complaining about each other. Oh, this brother, like that, like that, that brother. Is, uh, tell you, this person is a pain in the neck, and you get a pain in the neck. Ah. So you got so much of pain in your neck because you're, everybody's a pain in your neck. Okay, what do you say now? Honestly, are you going to say the words of God's, uh, God's kingdom? The words of God's kingdom? Huh? I'm blessed. Amen. The blessing is gone, it's on my life. The blessing is working for me. I'm blessed and highly favored of God. Amen. I'm beautiful. I'm handsome. I'm intelligent. I'm young. Amen. You keep saying, yeah, amen. Strong. Uh, let the weak say I'm strong. I'm rich. Oh, I'm very poor. You know? No, I'm poor. No. Keep declaring what you want to see happen. Let me tell you, the image that you speak is going to become a reality one day. As you see in your heart, that's what. Okay, this is so important, huh? You need to start speaking. You need to start speaking what? The words of the kingdom. So align yourself to words, because the words are going to empower you and move you forward. Okay, or take you backwards, whichever. You know, you cannot alter the kingdom of God to your lifestyle. You have to alter your lifestyle to God's kingdom if you want to operate in this kingdom. Okay, Mark fourteen, uh, four verse fourteen and twenty. I'm going to close now. The Bible says the sower went out to sow seeds. And where did he sow the seeds? Where? In the heart. The Bible says the sower went to sow seeds, uh, sow the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear it, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word, 
immediately receive it with gladness, continue, and they have no roots in them, so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises from the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Okay, now, these are the ones among, uh, sown among thorns, and they are the ones who hear the word, and the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches and the desires of other things entering in, choking the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But these are the ones sown on good ground. On good ground are those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit some 30 fold, 60 fold, and a hundred fold. Amen. God sowing seeds, God sowing his word, his seed. It's an imperishable seed, incorruptible seed that's sowing into your life today. But where is it sowing? In your heart. What kind of soil do you have in your heart? Is it stony? Is it rocky? Is it thorny? All these hearts can keep the word of God from germinating. And you say, it never worked for me. Lah. It never worked for me. Lah. I don't know. Lah. It worked for somebody, lah, but it never works for me. Why? Check your heart. Check your heart. Is your heart open to receive the word so that the word germinates and bears fruit for the glory of God's kingdom? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So start sowing. What's that? Sow a seed for your marriage. If your marriage is in trouble, sow a seed for your marriage. Start speaking the word of God into your marriage. Huh? What are you sowing into your marriage? What are you saying about your partners? Keep sowing something. Sow the word of God. Don't keep sowing what the devil tells you. Huh? What do you want to see change in your children? Not keep telling them what they are. They are not. Tell them what they are. <laughs> what the word of God says that they are. Yeah. Keep sowing the words. Sowing the words of God in, into your family. What are you sowing into your business? What are you seeing about your business? Are you sowing seeds of prosperity? Amen. Keep sowing those seeds of prosperity. Keep saying the word, words of the kingdom over your business and see it prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you sowing? We are sick and you need healing. Start sowing seeds of healing and you will see healing come manifest in your body. Amen. Whatever it is today, you start sowing it right. No more sowing the devil seeds, tears, tears, tears. And more of his weeds, weeds, weeds. Your heart is so crowded with weeds, God's word cannot get rooted in anymore. Amen? Let, we really, we, God wants to bless, bless all of us. The blessing of God is unlimited. The blessing of God is so powerful. I talked about the blessing two weeks ago, how the blessing... The devil can't stop the blessing of God on your life. You can stop the blessing. You, by choosing the words you choose, speak life and good days is you. You choose whether your life is going to be blessed or your life is not going to be blessed. It's all our choice by our speaking. No, but nobody is blessing me. You know, my, my parents are just cursing me all the time. I mean, good for nothing and blah, blah, blah. Don't believe what the... Your parents say, if your parents are non-Christian and they are, you know, I, I have, I meet some beautiful young girls and their lives are so messed up because the parents have sown, you know, hurtful words into their life, cursing them from young until now. And they, they, they feel so dirty inside because of the constant words that the parents have put in their minds. So sad. So sad. That's what the devil is doing. Using the parents to destroy the children by the words. Words. Okay, uses to destroy each other by the words. Using to destroy the church by the words. It's all words. Your some somebody used the uh, the, the the saying that uh, what's that? Uh, sticks and stones cannot break me, huh? But words can what? Words can kill you. Okay. Words can kill you. Amen. Let's all today be ask God to guard our words and start blessing yourself. Okay, the one verse I want to show you is so powerful. Huh? 
I don't care how bad the situation is. Just remember that the blessing is on your life. And you, the, where the blessing is going to come from, your words. Okay, turn to Isaiah 63. And how powerful this blessing is. So that he who blesses himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he who swears in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten. And because they're hidden from my eyes. Hallelujah. I want to say, maybe you have been sowing wrongly in the past. But today, today you're going to take the word of God and you're going to bless yourself. You're going to bless yourself. Amen. You're going to keep blessing yourself. You're going to bless and say, I'm blessed. I'm a highly favored of God. I'm above and not beneath. I'm, a, I'm the first and not the last. I can do all things through Christ. The greater one is in me. The Satan is defeated. The devil is under my feet. Hallelujah. I thank God. Hallelujah. I'm going to increase. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to prosper and everything that I do shall succeed. That's what you're going to confess and you're going to bless yourself. You're going to cancel everything that you've spoken over yourself. Every cancel everything that you've spoken over your partner in anger. Everything that you've spoken wrongly over your children. Everything that the enemy has caused you to speak those words uh, over the church, over your ministry. We cancel that in the name of Jesus. Everything. Hallelujah. From today onwards, God, put a guard over my mouth. King David said, put a guard over my mouth. Every time I want to say something wrong, uh, think something wrong. Uh. <laughs> put plaster there. Huh? You're angry with your husband, just plaster yourself, stay in a room. <laughs> so you will come out and say, oh, all the things that you're not supposed to say, say it all out. Huh? Okay. Let's do that. Let's rise. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. Once we know we are a people, we are a blessed people. In fact, in the Old Testament, what God's blessed, no one can reverse. No one. No enemy can put charm on you, can curse you. No one. Absolutely no one. Except yourself. Except yourself. You choose. You choose the words. You choose life and good days by speaking life. By speaking good days I'm going to have good days Hallelujah My life is not going downward My life is going upward Hallelujah Hallelujah The good days are coming Amen The days the Malaysia Good days are coming Hallelujah I declare The kingdom of heaven Is coming Down into Malaysia I believe The kingdom of God Is on the shoulders And where is the kingdom of God? On the shoulders And you know why on the shoulders and not on the head? Because the kingdom is on the body And who is the body? The church Church, realize that it's not God do something God do something God said my government is on your shoulders And where is the shoulder? It's not on the head It's on your shoulders It's on the body And we are the church When the church we rise up and know how powerful we are It doesn't matter how old you are How young you are How insignificant the devil wants to make you think That you can't do anything What can you do? You have words of the kingdom Hallelujah Praise God Amen? Amen Praise God Praise God Praise God Hallelujah Praise God Praise God Let's stretch our hands towards heaven We're going to pray right now Hallelujah Hallelujah Praise God Praise God Praise God Praise God We're going to speak We're going to confess Hallelujah What do you want to see in your life? Open your mouth right now Confess them and declare over your ministry Children Children's ministry is going to prosper And grow And, and the peace of God will be upon our children They're going to be mighty in the land Our children are going to be mighty in the land They will rise up as leaders in the land Hallelujah They're going to be great doctors, engineers, teachers Hallelujah Our children are rising up Hallelujah To be great in this land Hallelujah They shall prosper Prosper, prosper, hallelujah, prosper, hallelujah. Everything that we do, we're going to succeed. Everything, absolutely. The gift of righteousness is over my life. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah, no condemnation. Thank you for the abundance of grace. Thank you for the gift of righteousness to reign in this life. Reign, hallelujah. We're going to reign, we're going to reign. Amen. How many of us going to reign? Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to open like I promised. Every week we're going to turn this into a prayer house. Amen. I want you to come right now. Okay, I told the okay, KL, wait now, wait before you come. Huh? Let me tell you very, 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 very serious. Take this very, very serious. All right. 
once I was saying, I remember one Sunday I was looking, I was, was I, I was giving the altar call. I was, I was just, you know, just talking to God. No, altar call, you all call, huh? nobody come out, you know. So few, and then got to say, come out, come out, come out. Still people standing there, look at each other like that. God spoke to my heart and he said, tell, tell my people. And when you come in, let's see. The Spirit of God is the power of God that's moving. Amen. And when God spoke, the world came into being. See, every Sunday when you come into the atmosphere, the Spirit of God is here. And the Word of God is spoken over your life. It's then it's million dollar words. I want you to see words like money, eh? because we all Chinese and all this Malaysian, all of us think about. Everything is valuable, is money, 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 money. Money is the most valuable thing like, on, on planet Earth. My people to know that when they come out to receive from me, you are like receiving 10,000, huh? 10 million from God's kingdom. The power of God that's released here when you receive. That's why I say we've got to freely receive freely receive from God and say, God, I want to keep receiving. I want to be like a sponge. Receive, receive, receive. Every opportunity when the house of God is open for prayer, come forward to receive. Then don't stand there and say, I'm so dry. I don't know why I come to church, but I'm so dry. But you're not receiving. You're not receiving. It doesn't matter who is it. Maybe me praying for you. It can be any of the leaders praying for you. But because the word of God is spoken, the words are spoken, you're going to receive from God when you come forward during the altar call. Okay? You should rush forward. Huh? Have you seen people all queue up for just one Hello Kitty toy? Get up early morning to queue so long just to buy one Hello Kitty. What's the sense, huh? That little kitty people can queue early morning and just... The house of God, the words of God, the gifts of God are just waiting to be released. And are you running to God and saying, God, I'm ready, I'm ready to release, receive from you. Not just special speaker, your pastor, day in, day week in, week out. Pray, pray for you. You come forward. As you come forward, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what needs you are facing right now. You bring forward, you bring your children forward. It doesn't matter how many times you come forward, but you're coming to before God and say, I'm ready to receive. Are you ready to receive? Are you ready to jump into the river of God? The river of life is here. Come forward right now, okay? As we're going to sing at whatever chorus it is, I want everybody, leaders to come forward, come help me pray. We're going to release the words of God into our, our people. Release the words of God, the blessing of God. Amen. Our first person to act on the word. Hallelujah. I love that. That's how you act on the word. Act on the word. Huh? Hallelujah. Act on God's word. Just start. Praise. Amen. Leaders, we want you to come forward, okay? Up there. No. Come forward, all our prayers and intercessors.